What's happening everybody? The Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today's video is about two different style of PCs, but in the same water cooling classification. We'll put it that way. So this is going to be a bit of a prize fight punch out. Not to steal from my friend Brian Tong. And check out Brian Tong's content if you're not familiar with him. Um, basically, we're going to look at not really the performance of these PCs because they're, they're different. This one here is the iBuyPower Element CL with an 11700 KF processor in an RTX 3070, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, I did a previous video on this. It performed exceptional. It's excellent for gaming. You'll get some excellent like 1080p video editing, maybe 1440p video editing if you're into that. Um, and it's incredibly quiet. So this is a thumbs up. Spoilers, right? This one here is a bit of a different beast. This is the Fluid Gaming Vanquish 295. So uh, EK has their own pre-built PC, you know, water cooling line. And this one is a, a bit more high end. It has a 5950X, so that's 16 cores, 32 threads, 64 gigs of RAM, as well as an RTX 3090. So you wouldn't necessarily be playing 1080p games and like 1080p video editing on this. This is ready for 4K all the things, right? So a bit of a beast, but this is not which one is more powerful. You can watch other videos for that. I'm into water cooling. I want to know who did water cooling better in different ways. All right. So let's dive into this. So when you take both of these PCs out of their boxes, you're going to notice two very different things. The iBuyPower Element CL it already has its fluid going through the whole system. So you don't actually have to top it off. You don't have to do anything. Just put it on the desk plug in the cables for your monitor, you know, keyboard, mouse, press the power button, and you're good to go. The one right here, this is a bit of a different beast. So the Fluid Gaming gives you the opportunity, and I feel it's an opportunity, to actually fill the loop yourself. Because if you're going to get uh, some custom water cooling, that's a great experience. Now, you don't have to go through the trouble of bending tubes, cutting tubes, and all that stuff. But filling a loop is very simple, very easy. And I think it's a missed opportunity for iBuyPower to allow their customers to enjoy that experience of basically topping off the loop, filling it initially, doing all those things that kind of make you feel like, okay, I actually had a part in this where it's already a pre-built PC, so you don't have any part in basically like physically building this yourself. So EK does include a nice little you know, tube right here so that you can easily fill it. So there's a fill port in the front. And there's also kind of a drain valve in the bottom. This also does have a fill port and a drain valve, top and bottom as well, but you know, no fluid and no tubing. So it's a bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion for the iBuyPower, but this could also be a bonus for many people to already have it pre-filled. So take that as you will. There's no winner in that respect. I like this way by EK, but personal preference. Now, in terms of the distro plates here, you'll notice the iBuyPower distro plate is pretty I'll say bland, kind of straightforward. Um, and meanwhile, the EK1 is full of all kinds of stuff going on. Now, EK is a water cooling company. iBuyPower is a pre-built PC company. So this one is going to be more polished in certain respects. This one is going to make more sense on the assembly line. So what they did for the iBuyPower is make it easier for them to actually build these at a much lower cost and at a faster rate. For EK, this style does take time to put together and there's more potential points of failure as well. So they have to go through, in my opinion, they would definitely have to go through more quality checks because this is water cooling. You know, one leak anywhere in these, what, 30 points of failure, I'm just throwing a number out, but it might be about 30 points of failure and then the whole system could be fried, right? For this, it's a bit more simple for somebody who's not fully trained in the art of water cooling to put together a water cooling PC. So let me go into that. So why does the EK Fluid Gaming take a bit more longer to assemble? Well, part of it is the fittings. So you'll notice that this fitting right here is very similar to the one being used in this system. So when you take it apart, you're going to have an O-ring right there. So you have to make sure that that's good. And this is kind of basically the clamp part. You're going to fit your acrylic or PETG tubing in this, and this is what is actually going to screw into your GPU or CPU uh, water blocks. So you put your tubing in there. This slides over the tubing, screws down, and you have to make sure that it's all entirely flush, right? 
uh, and then of course all the leak testing with that. And if the tube is too long or too short, then you have to disassemble this again, right? Get the tube out, unscrew this if you need to. Most times you don't normally need to unless you actually need to do some adjustments, maybe using something like this, which is kind of like an offset. Um, but that's if you're personally building it, they don't use this actually with the fluid gaming. So in the end, it takes a bit more work, right? And if you have to do this two or three times, that's uh, time being spent, time is money. Now, iBuyPower for their Element CL line, they did it very differently. They were focused on manufacturing, what's gonna be fastest. So they actually have fittings here that are not removable, right? And when you press these down, that's when you can actually stick in your tube and then boom, it's in there, stuck. You press it down again to remove the tube and that's it. So it's a very fast, very efficient system. Doesn't look nearly as good in terms of fittings compared to the EK ones, but in terms of an assembly line and keeping the cost low and the time saving, that makes so much sense. Additionally, for their CPU water block, they have these screws here that are kind of loose, so you can actually slide the CPU water block side to side to get the exact measurements you need, basically for the tubing. So you don't have to cut tubing over and over again to, the, to get the exact uh, length that you need. And this is actually on the distro plate as well. So in terms of keeping things parallel, these will actually go up and down. So it just makes things kind of look nicer, just in case, say, a distro plate and a motherboard uh, where the CPU is don't quite line up. So that's actually quite ingenious. So an easy example of what I mean is this motherboard here is by MSI. And as you can tell, it's a black motherboard. So with this style of motherboard, I think the whole system looked better. But the downside was this CPU here was placed slightly differently than the CPU on the uh, ASUS X570 Prime that's in here, the white motherboard. So I actually had to cut new tubing in order to properly get the CPU water block to fit right here and match up the distro plate in the front. If I decided to change the motherboard for the iBuyPower Element CL, I may not have actually had to cut new tubing because this would actually slide back and forth to allow for different distance, which is kind of cool. And then in terms of the height, this would be attached to the front distro plate and it would go up and down as well. So that would actually be a time saver for anybody that wanted to do their own uh, additions to this custom loop. Now you may notice here that the RTX 3070 here in the iBuyPower Element CL does not have a backplate. And as you see here, the EK Fluid Gaming does have a backplate on the GPU. Now this is a 3090, so I would have loved to see, since EK now has active backplates, an active backplate for this 3090 because the VRMs on this thing get scorching hot. But for the 3070 that iBuyPower has, that's not an issue. And it's not because it's not an issue that there's no backplate here because the backplate actually does help with some of the cooling. It's just the fact that the 3070s don't get hot on the backside. And this actually does give people the opportunity to put their own custom backplate on there. And there's lots of custom backplates that would actually fit this 3070 here. So it's not really a big deal if that actually does bother you. You can tell with the EK Fluid Gaming and you have to like look really hard, but this part of these two tubes are actually lower than this part over here. So the distro plate, the ports here are actually higher and this over here is lower. So if they actually had that flexibility that the iBuyPower uh, setup has where they can adjust this going up or down, it would actually be entirely parallel. So as you can see, these two runs are completely parallel because they get to use this nifty little slider that iBuyPower has. But this right here, there's no slider. And because this fitting is basically like molded into the case, uh, they can't use an offset fitting either. So this is actually drooping down right here. So this is a low point, this is a high point. And so it's just not uh, straight or parallel, put it that way. It's, it's kind of wonky. Um, and I'm not sure what they would be able to do besides actually bending this in a better way, but you'd still be able to see that it's not a true like 90 degree, just flush uh, parallel run right there. The Element CL cut it a little bit close when it came to the bend right here as well. So I would have liked to see these a bit lower because this bend right here is kind of struggling to get into this port for the GPU. You can kind of tell that it's not quite flush, like fully closed right there. I'm sure it'll be fine because of the O-rings that are in there, but it is something that could have been done better. So let's talk about the cooling capacity for both of these systems. Now the iBuyPower Element CL here 
is cooling an 11700KF processor with an RTX 3070. To do that, they're using a single 360 millimeter radiator in the back, and it's an aluminum radiator, very similar to many AIOs that all of you are very familiar with. So it actually does a very good job. Whether I'm running uh, Blender benchmarks, uh, 3D Mark, playing games, editing in DaVinci Resolve, this system has always been entirely quiet, all right? So I'm really happy with that performance. This system here, the Fluid Gaming Vanquish 295, is an entirely different beast. So with its 5950X and RTX 3090, it would not really be able to be as quiet and cool if it only had a single 360 millimeter radiator like the iBuyPower. So they actually added an additional 240 millimeter radiator in the side here. So you have a 360 up top, 240 in the side, and that's actually doing an excellent job for these components here. The downside though of this system is actually the 3090 because all 3090s are incredibly hot on the backside. EK does have somewhat of a solution for that with their active backplates, but this is an aluminum custom loop. Their active backplates are copper based. So unless EK comes out with an aluminum active backplate, when I would love to see that because I would love to throw that in this system, um, the temperatures for this 3090 for the VRAM easily hits 100 degrees Celsius. So keep that in mind. There are solutions that you can do. You can uh, take off the backplate here, replace the um, thermal pads with higher quality, like the highest end ones you can find. Uh, I will be doing some testing on these to really give a good solid recommendation for what thermal pads that I recommend for GPUs. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, just be aware that a 3090, almost no matter what system you buy, is going to run very, very hot on the backside. But the overall GPU temperatures in the system have been excellent for everything that I've thrown at it. Blender benchmarks, DaVinci Resolve, gaming, uh, you name it. It's been perfectly fine and entirely quiet as well with the custom, well, with the uh, standard fan curves. I decided to play around and kind of do my own custom fan curves. And I made it more efficient, but in the end, it was still a quiet system as well. So, and I adjusted the fan curves for this one as well. Still a quiet system. So that's part of the purpose of custom water cooling, to have a quiet running PC with really low temperatures. And if you do have a hot spot here or there, like the backside of a 3090, you have the opportunity to fix that as well. Cable management. So let's get straight to it for this. Cable management for water cooling can be easy or annoying depending on how the whole loop and the case and all that stuff. So the pumps are right here for both of these, right in the front. They're part of the distribution plate. Um, so the EK distribution plate also has RGB. Uh, this one right here has RGB-ish in the front as well. Um, so you'll have like some extra cables that you wouldn't normally have for just an air-cooled system. Now. This is using the Li and Li O11 Dynamic. Now, there's pluses and minuses to this. The plus is there is tons of third-party water cooling support uh, to do whatever you want in this case. It's literally one of the best, not only airflow cases out, but water cooling cases as well. So EK makes a ton of hardware for this case, and so do other third-party manufacturers as well. Um, and then when it comes to actually replacing like a CPU water block, that's where the issue comes in because for whatever reason, Lee and Lee actually has the, the back of this all covered up. And then when you take apart like this hard drive cage back here, um, it's kind of like offset. So it still is really annoying to get to the back of the motherboard so you can actually attach other CPU water blocks if you want to do that. This case, however, you'll notice it's wide open. All right. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I really love that and I wish more case manufacturers, specifically pre-built case manufacturers, um, or pre-built PC manufacturers, use cases where you can easily access that uh, back area there as well. So that's kind of what it is, right? It is what it is. And when it comes to the overall messiness of the iBuyPower one that you see here, uh, yes, it's messy, but it's functional, all right? You can easily access all these cables Things are tied down exactly where they need to be tied down to be somewhat clean. Um, and then if you need to access a cable, you're not clipping like 50 cable ties in order to get to something. There's far too many PC manufacturers that just go overkill 
and they're just like, yeah, ours is clean, but then you need to actually access a cable and you're spending 15 minutes clipping all these darn cable ties and stuff. So I appreciate the way that they did this. It's not pretty, but it's functional. Um, and then when it comes to <clears throat> excess, there's plenty of excess cables to add other peripherals as you need to. This one right here, it's a higher end system. So it looks neater, it looks cleaner, and it also is at a fault. So you do have your plate right here. So let me take that plate off. The Fluid Gaming PC definitely has very tight cable management uh, and the braided cables as well. So that looks really nice going through the front. It is annoying, as I mentioned before, to actually access these cables because there's so many tie downs. So that's the downside of when it looks good, it's probably because there's a lot of these zip tie things. And in order to access this, you're gonna be cutting, 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 and trying not to actually cut cables. So again, for the iBuy Power, there's not as many tie downs, not many zip ties. So it's easy to access the cables as you need to. Uh, easy expansion right here for the SSDs. And of course, the backside for the CPU water block because accessing the CPU water block behind here is an absolute nightmare having to undo this cage. The hard drive is right here and then to get to it at a weird angle. <sighs> I've done it far too many times. Many of my viewers asked, why are the fans on the rear of the radiator here? Uh, shouldn't they be on the front? Well, that's somewhat personal preference. I actually like the way that this looks with a little bit of RGB glow going through the radiator. But the reality is there's no space. So you cannot actually fit these fans on the front of this radiator here because the distro plate actually comes too far in. And so it's not possible to actually screw these into the front. So in summary, both of these systems definitely get thumbs up for me. Uh, they're quiet running, they're efficient. They do what they need to do for their particular tasks at hand. So again, I buy power, excellent for gaming, fluid gaming 295, excellent for gaming and everything else you want to throw at it uh, because it's just different hardware. But when it comes to the actual water cooling, they just did it in different ways. The iBuyPower is able to keep costs low because of their assembly line approach to this, which is kind of cool. And then the EK Fluid Gaming, I mean, it's EK. So they're using their, their own EK hardware, which are some of the best in class where most companies are actually having EK as the standard that they want to try to meet or beat. So in the end, you can't go wrong with either of these PCs. If you're into video editing, excellent for the Fluid Gaming. I will actually put a link in the description below. If you're into gaming, the iBuyPower Element CL, and it will do 1080p video editing, 1440p video editing as well, no problem whatsoever. And I'll have a link in the description below for this one as well. So shout out to both of these companies, iBuyPower and EK Fluid Gaming for supplying these PCs. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, put them in the comment, comment section below and all that good stuff and like and subscribe the video. Uh, this actually took me a long time to really test both of these systems uh, because I want to make sure that I understand the full ins and outs, all the flaws, all the good points for these systems. So thank you very much and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.